Jean, let's begin with you. And can we start with the pricing? Can you make sense of the pricing for me and just talk about what this means strategically for the company? It's a big deal. It's probably the biggest takeaway. And the significance of it didn't really hit us until after the event just ended and we were parsing through their buy pages and really saw that upper end at almost $1,500. What this means is that if you take the average uh, pricing is up 20% uh, going forward for the next year, uh, that's a significant price increase. And I guess the, the begs the question is, will customers uh, uh, be willing to pay for that? And I think that the simple answer is yes, this price increase will stick. And because most consumers, call it 75% globally, pay for their phones and installment plans. And so we're talking about adding $10 per month, and that's something that people can uh, take. And just one final thought on this, John, is that this lever uh, uh, is uh, probably going to be the biggest X factor to the stock over the next 12 months. Do you share that enthusiasm, Walter? Because I'm looking at the iPhone XR and wondering whether a lot of people gravitate towards that instead of the higher-priced iPhone. Your thoughts? Right, I think Gene is right in terms of there's still high-priced products there that on payment plans can keep the ASP up. But probably the bigger story is that $750 access price on the, the iPhone XR. Um, that's a very attractive price, lower than what the A Plus had been selling at, at its entry level. At a time when we're going through several years where the replacement cycle is extended, maybe looking for an opportunity to bottom and see units play a bigger role in 2019 than they have in recent years. I mean, remember, yeah. we still haven't sold as many phones or they still haven't sold as many phones as they did back when the iPhone 6 was launched. And Gene, I want your input on that because the Apple company have done a great job of getting the attention away from volume unit sales towards ASP. Can you just talk about that transition and whether the iPhone R does complicate that? Uh, it, it does add a layer of uh, complication to it, but if you want to just take it at the, the highest level is that they announced three different phones, there's nine SKUs, because there are three different capacity configurations within SKU. So nine different SKUs were announced. The the cheapest SKU that Walter was just talking about was this uh, the 750, uh, that is the, the lowest capacity R SKU. That has a comparable ASP to the overall ASPs. Every other one of those eight is a higher ASP. And so I think at the end of the day is that even uh, we agree that the R is going to be the home run product. We expect that 37 percent of iPhone units over the next year are going to be that R. But we think that a lot of those people are going to configure up and could end up spending uh, kind of 850 uh, ultimately on average for that. And so I think uh, they're doing a wonderful job of uh, this, what we're referring to as a mastery in, in pricing tiers. And I think that the R is representative of that. Gene, as you guys know better than most, the stock reaction on launch day isn't much of an indicator of anything. It was interesting to see what happened with Fitbit, though, in yesterday's session with the stock down by 6%. Is there and should there be some enthusiasm around the watch, this new bigger watch, Gene? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that there, there should be. we got to obviously put it in the context. The reason why people aren't talking more about it is that with the wearable segment, the watch is the biggest component of that. It's about 5% of revenue today. The pace of growth quickened in the June quarter. They reported that it was up 60% versus up 50% in the March quarter. But the bigger picture here is that the category of wearables, if you think about consumer tech over the next decade, wearables is gonna be the biggest growth avenue. And so we think about more to do on the wrist and with watch, uh, AirPods, eventually some form of glasses. And so I think that the bigger story is this, is that the current wearable market is around the wrist and Apple is effectively built an insurmountable lead based on what they're doing with some of these uh, sensors and the ease of development on the platform.